Imagine you're a department chair and your dean asks you to immediately choose a new member for the president's new Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, or DEI Commission. You walk down the hallway and see the open office doors of three department members. Dan, an associate professor, has no particular expertise or expressed interest in DEI issues. He guards his time for research and he's known to turn down service requests. Amanda, an associate professor with a strong research reputation, is viewed as conscientious and her research agenda is focused on DEI issues. Yet you know that department members find Amanda difficult to work with. Lucia is an associate professor whose research focuses on inequality. She's already active in DEI-related service. She's also likable and produces high-quality work. You think she'll say yes. In this scenario, you are most likely to ask Lucia. This common scenario reflects research which shows that white women and faculty of color do more teaching and service. These activities are important, but are often undervalued in institutional decisions such as tenure and promotion. Over the last five years, we've studied this problem through the Faculty Workload and Rewards Project, a National Science Foundation Advanced Action Research Project. We examined the problem of equity in faculty workloads and studied strategies that departments can use to make the distribution of workload more fair. This video summarizes our work and aims to help academic departments approach equity-minded workload reform. First, we learned the way faculty work is assigned and taken up is typically unregulated and not driven by information. In our earlier scenario, there was no information available for the department chair regarding the number of committees on which faculty members served. A lack of information makes us vulnerable to bias. Our first recommendation is to review and share workload data at a departmental level by creating a work activity dashboard. A dashboard is a simple table or chart representing different areas of faculty work aggregated by relevant groups. The dashboards allow everyone to understand who is doing what within a department, so faculty members can benchmark their workload against other department members of the same rank. Dashboards also allow departments to identify equity issues, such as in the number of service committees on which faculty members serve, helping the department chair and Lucia herself to understand if she's doing more or less service compared to her colleagues. The second thing we learned is that dashboards alone are not enough. We need to build guardrails into departmental workload policies and processes to ensure the equitable distribution of teaching, mentoring, advising, and service. Such guardrails include policies and practices which foster equitable distribution, completion, and recognition of work. For example, because faculty members often lack clarity about what kinds of teaching and service is expected of them, many departments created workload expectations guidelines. Guidelines outline the expected service and teaching commitments of faculty members by rank and appointment type. If there had been an expectations policy in the department, then the chair might have connected with Lucia and learned that she was already serving on too many committees, while Amanda was serving on too few. The chair might have asked Amanda instead. In addition, Lucia would also have been able to benchmark her service against the standard herself and make her own decision. But what if Lucia wanted to say yes, despite the number of committees on which she already serves? This is where credit systems come in. Once departments have clear expectations for faculty contributions, they can create policies wherein a faculty member can get appropriate credit for doing more of the service that interests them. If Lucia said yes to the DEI committee, she could be relieved of some of her advising or service duties. Our Faculty Workload and Rewards Project published a report with the American Council on Education. The report provides 17 examples of equity-minded policies and practices. These include rotations of time-intensive roles, differentiated workloads, restructuring committee service, and efforts to make service and teaching assignments more transparent. We found that faculty members are more satisfied when they have access to workload data, when there is transparency, clarity, and accountability, and when there are policies and practices that help create guardrails towards equity. 
this is true regardless of the race or gender of the faculty member. Despite these successes, this work is both complex and ongoing. One policy will not solve every problem. Workload equity is an ongoing project. Different policies and practices address different equity issues that impact different groups of faculty members. For example, white women identify the unequal distribution of labor as a primary equity issue, while women of color identify that their labor is often invisible and uncredited. Given nuances like this, we recommend departments take the process of workload equity gradually. Begin by examining local teaching and service data to consider equity issues salient to your department, who they influence most, and why. Next, examine policies and practices that might address these issues, such as credit systems, rotations, and restructuring of committee work. And finally, integrate relevant policies into shared governance by consensus. Some might ask, is this worth the trouble? Won't talking about workload open up a can of worms? Through our work, we learned the can is already open. There are already faculty members who are burnt out, stressed, and disadvantaged because of workload inequity. Some will leave the university. Silence and inaction are responses. That sends a message that negatively impacts both departmental and institutional goals. There are many reasons to address workload equity, which can differ depending on local circumstances. But the bottom line is that faculty are more satisfied, committed, and productive if work is assigned and rewarded fairly. We hope that your department will take action next.